Hey, welcome to the Bathroom Break Podcast. I'm your host, Rab himself, and I'm sitting here today with actor Tony Cavallero. Nailed it, dude. Dude. Got the, got the pronunciation perfect. Yeah. <laughs> dude, I, well, it was funny because last night I was like talking to my wife. I was like, yeah, I'm going to go do a, a podcast with Tony Cavallero. And she goes, I thought it was Steve. I was like... <laughs> No, that's Caballero yeah. and the skateboarder. Yeah, yeah. different. <laughs> yeah, so it's a, it's a V. and Just got uh, that baby brain, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, exactly. We're not <laughs> yeah. well, upon if she, this should be censored or yeah, not. No, she'll, she'll claim... Uh, oh, wait one sec. Well, fuck it. We should just go. Right? Through I think it'll um, be fine. But We're uh, in the backyard, yeah, guys, yeah. so you might hear some rampant highway noise because I live <laughs> yeah. behind the 101 Couple freeway. landing in this big-ass backyard. <laughs> but, uh, no, she'll be like, oh, like, baby brain. I'm like, well, what's your excuse from before you were pregnant? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> always baby brain. Yeah. Yeah. So Just always no matter what, one. it's always baby brain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so uh, so cool, man. Well, thanks for uh, inviting me to your... Yeah, uh, I'm glad you guys are here, man. Your amazing place here. There's some serious history going on in this yeah place. dude it's a it's a pretty cool old pad man uh marlon brando lived here for a few years back in the day and um yeah i'll give I'll, I'll give you each occupant in the weird stories that i know so brando lived here yeah him and his buddy wally cox owned the place together and supposedly they were maybe romantically involved for a minute. i wouldn't doubt it yes <laughs> and so wally cox owned it originally and then brando they would throw parties here all the time and Brando loved it so much he bought it from Wally and then it was still a party house and he had it for a few years and then he went and shot Mutiny on the Bounty and by the time he got back from shooting Mutiny on the Bounty he shot that in Bora Bora remarried out there to some Tahitian woman yes came back and everybody had found out that he lived here so like nightly teenagers would jump the fence and go swimming in the pool and so he electrified the chain link fence. No. So when we got rid of the chain link <laughs> fence, we still found those old like pearl electrodes. But supposedly some kid came and pissed on the fence and got really hurt. So we got like sued by the city and <laughs> yeah, the kid, yeah. and then yeah. he had to take the electric fence down. Uh-huh, but, um, I know the feeling. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do, dude. You're like, oh, the two dozen times I pissed on a fence. Yeah. <laughs> Surprised I still have a dong. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I think that's the only Brando, like, fun story I have. And then and then it, I think Frank Zappa either rented it or I, I know he lived here for a couple years. Yeah, that's rad. Yeah, that's rad. He was a, a crazy guy. But the good thing about this house is that uh, no weirdness. I've never felt, like, spooky vibes or anything okay. like that. And then it became a yoga commune. And... Uh, like That's James, probably what cleared all the spooky I think bugs. so, dude. Like, they would <laughs> yeah. do water bursts in the pool. Oh, shit. And there were, like, 20 yeah. people living here at one time. <laughs> and uh, we were doing some paperwork for the house, and I found this old document. And they had submitted it to the community to try and turn this place into, like, an actual yoga commune, like a business. Okay. And there were, like, 600 signatures from neighbors against it that they were, like, <laughs> hippies, that it always smelled like drugs, Die that they hippies. would park wherever they wanted. <laughs> yeah. They're always super loud and up yeah. at all hours of the night. They got a point. Yeah, you know, but um, I guess one of the people that practiced uh, yoga here was David Carradine and his wife at the time, Barbara oh, Hershey, damn. and he loved it so much that he bought it. Wow. And uh, he had horses is here and (laughs) he actually cut kung fu in the garage that i'm looking at right now and he put this big window in there so he could look in the backyard because he was like an ep that's fucking that was his editing bay yeah so he cut all of kung fu dude that's some serious fucking history yeah and then he put in a bunch of um there's a bunch of stained glass in the kitchen that supposedly he put in and some dog scratches on the front door that was supposedly his big dog and i actually talked to some woman uh because i was looking for old footage of the house yeah. I talked to some woman on Facebook who had posted a video from inside the house in like the late 70s. Oh, shit. And it was like a trip with like shag carpet and everything. And I'm like, that's she our house. She posted it on Facebook? Yeah, so yeah. From oh. some old video she took while she was here hanging out with David Carradine. Damn. And uh, she was like, oh, that house is always so great. The backyard's amazing. Uh, but like I told you before, he had 
you know, again, this was always like the big party house, and he had a big party, and he had horses, and a, a horse got out and fell into the pool, and <laughs> the fire department came and had to get the horse out of the pool, and and uh, then he got busted and couldn't keep his horses here anymore. Oh, man. Yeah, you know. Well, I mean, there's got to be some sort of rules about. Oh yeah, I mean, there's like only designated areas where yeah. you can have <laughs> horses in your backyard. It's only like that Rancho District, I think, in Burbank, where yeah, you're yeah, actually yeah. allowed to have horses. But yeah. yeah. But, That's uh, funny, dude. Just to imagine some horse in the pool. In the pool Everyone's at a party. Like, party! Yeah, fuck, dude. <laughs> That's how you know it got crazy exactly, enough, right? Yeah. <laughs> Carotene crazy, dude. Yeah. <laughs> fuck. We gotta take this to Carotene right? crazy. Carotene crazy. <laughs> Our one neighbor told us that he used to every morning, like clockwork, butt naked, walk right out into the front patio, grab his newspaper, go right back in. You know we have those two gates. Yeah. yeah. So just thinking, like, whatever. How's everyone doing this hey, morning? Hey, everyone. <laughs> it's like he was a bit of an exhibitionist. Yeah, right? that's so, hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So a lot, a lot of crazy history here in this, uh, in this nice home. Yeah, man. So is it, uh, is it as crazy while you're here, or is it pretty tame? We sorta? like to keep it pretty low key. Like I said, we did just have a wedding back here with 220 people. Okay, if that's low key. Bananas. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing that's so weird. You see all the furniture and everything now, but when it's cleared out, it, it, it like totally transformed into like this venue. Yeah. Um, and my wife I and mean, I. Yeah. We've been longtime uh, volunteers at the Children's Hospital, and we've been trying to do a big event with them for a while. And we were calling, kind of always like, what are, what are the logistics going to be? And oh, how yeah. where are people, people going to park? So this was like a great test run. Nice. Uh, but we love to have people over, man, you know. Yeah. But like yeah. we were talking about before, I'm sober. So for yeah, me, I'm yeah. like, midnight hits, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm ready for bed, man. Yeah, I've got I a nice book. I'm going to Exactly, dude. I've fire. got some stupid... <laughs> horror thriller book that i'm got yeah. 10 pages left in and i'm like that's you know. i know that's my world these days and i love it man right, dude. yeah so you do work for the children's hospital yeah that's mm-hmm. pretty cool so yeah i was doing uh improv shows there with the groundlings um and uh, i just kind of was like man i gotta get back into uh, more volunteer work because i grew up doing the boy scouts and that was always a big part of the boy scouts and even when i i did karate and and even that, we'd always be doing some kind of a, you know, charity thing. And so I signed up and it's this, you know, it's a pretty intense process. Background checks, yeah. urine tests, yeah. shots. I mean, you have to be... It's good to know, really. It, yeah, it's really <laughs> great. Know, yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. so glad they put in all that work. Yeah. Um, but anyways, I went through the checks and my wife and I have been full-time volunteers there going once a week for like the last like four and a half years oh that's awesome and uh we just love it there man yeah it's so great to go and yeah we work there in the arts department so we'll go and just do arts projects and sit with the kids and then i still do two to three improv shows every year with the groundlings where we bring in the cast hell and yeah kind of build stories around the kids and their families and use them as characters and dude, stuff. that's so and fun yeah, they, really they're cool. probably psyched as hell oh like, yeah. dude they love it man yeah, <laughs> it's really great that's, yeah that's that's amazing yeah. uh my wife and i do some stuff in haiti we uh start a little nonprofit and we go down there and kind of oh, awesome, um, man. just uh, work with, you know, a bunch of locals that are just amazing people. And, and the kids seem to be where we normally gravitate. Yeah. And then uh, at course. this point, we're a little project. We're, we're working on raising some funds to build a little school in this one area. Killer, dude. And, uh, but, but the kids, it's like immediately just, you're just like, Oh, they right? gravitate right towards you. I like, know. Yeah, it's yeah. just such an awesome like spirit that they have. We're such great people, dude. We are. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible people Basi- that owe a lot. Yes, to, exactly. Uh, <laughs> well, basically, I'm just trying to make amends for all the <laughs> shitty things I've done. Yeah. Me you know, too. Just slowly, I got a lot of work cut out for me. <laughs> Jesus, you need to build 18 schools before you're <laughs> yeah. even like reach yeah. the bottom before of. Before I could even really mention it, I, I jumped the gun on that. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's funny. So, so groundlings, dude, that's rad. Yeah. Is that, that, is that how you kind of got started with, with acting or? Yeah. So I, um, I grew up in a little town right outside of Washington, DC and in Dale, Virginia and, um, grew up, my parents were always super funny and my dad had acted in high school. My mom had acted in high school, but they were always like the funniest people around. And I was a little fat kid, you know? <laughs> yeah. So that was Which like, is my, like <laughs> yeah. you do the little truffle oh, yeah. shuffle, truffle and, shuffle and, your, and my <laughs> brother, you know, would be like. Tony does a great uh, Chris Farley impression to it, you know, and I'd have to, like, do it for the hot girls that he was dating. And, oh, sweet. Oh, it's the worst, <laughs> you know. And so, you know, I always use comedy to cope. But, yeah. you know, when you grow up in that small town, I'm sure it was the same in Philly. Like, I didn't know anyone that was in the entertainment business or even uh, if that was even, like, how do you even do that? Like, right. that's not even a thing to do. So 
Um, Wait, where, did, where, what town did you grow up in? Annandale. Okay. It's in Fairfax County there, 10 minutes outside of D.C. And, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that. so I did theater as a class, and I really enjoyed it. Um, but I was a I was a jock, so I did football, wrestling, and lacrosse, so I could never do the after-school plays. And also, again, like, you know, the reality of that, it never really locked in. And then I ended up going to uh, college at the Virginia Military Institute. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, where I was, uh, you know going to commission into the army and I ended up playing lacrosse there that was a big goal of mine to be a division one lacrosse player yeah. and and I was like well then I'll do a few years in the army and then I can figure out what I want to do from there and you know 9-11 had happened so kind of there was a bunch of impetus behind that and between my sophomore and junior year, year there I vacationed to LA for the first time and we were visiting with um a friend of my girlfriend's at that time who was doing like background work and she was also uh, a Hare Krishna and uh, okay, and uh, a little out there. And I was like, man, well, if she could do it, <laughs> yeah. maybe I could take this discipline from VMI, you know, and, and come yeah. to this. And, and so it started to kind of ruminate and then vacationed again that next summer. And then I was like, I'm going to do it. So my nice. whole senior year in college was like, how can I drop my commission and figure out how to get out to L.A., you know, um, without seeming like a total lunatic. Yeah. Because it's about 70% of people commission out of there and the rest end up being like Fairfax County police or government officials or lawyers or whatever else, you know? And, um, so what does commission mean? Commission means anybody that goes there can commission any branch as an officer. Oh, okay. Yeah. So just like West Point or the Naval Academy or anything like that, Citadel, uh, I, so I was on track to graduate and become a second lieutenant in the army. Right. So I dropped my commission and um, ended up kind of formulating, well, maybe I'll go get a master's in, because th- I was a history major. So I was like, maybe I'll get a master's in theater history or something like that. And that fell through. And meanwhile, I was getting pretty deep into uh, my alcoholism and my addiction in those last few cool. months in Virginia, which, <laughs> yeah, really great. Kind of actively building that up. and uh, Doesn't sound dark at yeah, all. Yeah, not at all, dude. Uh-uh. <laughs> nope, nope. And, uh, and I was like, I got a lot of catching up to do. I went yeah. to military school, man. I didn't get to party enough. You know? <laughs> right, right, right. You I didn't get right to, in. you know, drink and drive every time I left there. And you then know? you just speed right past everybody. <laughs> uh-huh, exactly, dude. You know, and so I graduated from there. I worked that summer, saved up, and then I packed up my car, didn't know anybody out in L.A., and, um, and moved out and... I ended up uh, taking some classes. I was going to get a second bachelor's degree at the uh, at Cal State LA, and that was fun. But it was definitely more theater based. And then that summer, I was doing extra work, and somebody had said, "You know, you should take classes at the Groundlings." I didn't know what that was, and I ended up going and, and like looking at the website, and like Will Ferrell's the first thing on the website, and I was like, "Whoa, Whoa. I can't do this. There's yeah. no way." Yeah, and a little you have intimidating. To, it, it, it's so intimidating, yeah. and. Um, I just remember like going to that audition and feeling like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Damn, like awesome. immediate connection yeah. with the form and the style that they had and the characters that they were doing. And, and, uh, and I was like, great. Because the thing that with L.A., and I'm sure you can get this, there's no structure like right, right. going from military school and even before that to high school sports and before that to Boy Scouts and karate, it was like, if you do, you know, one plus one equals two. Right. Where in L.A., like you can spin your wheels for 30 years right. and never have anything to show for it. Yeah. But 30 absolutely. years of spinning your wheels. Yeah. At least with the groundlings, I was like, OK, there's classes you take and you go in succession. And then if you get to that next level, then you get into the company and then you start performing. And then maybe, you know, because for me, I, I saw that company on the wall with 30 people on it. And I was like, oh, I know. You know, I know all of those people from commercials or little TV spots. And yeah. And then people go to SNL from there. So for me, that kind of became like my sole purpose. And um, and at that time, I was working as a janitor in the Valley oh, with yeah. my bachelor's degree from the prestigious Virginia Military Institute. <laughs> I did that for six years. Oh, wow. Yeah, I did that for six years on Magnolia and Lancashire. I, you know, vacuum, clean the urinals. Well, at a high school or something? Or? No, it's uh, it's called the El Portal Playhouse. It's on Lancashire oh, and Magnolia. Yeah, it's okay. that kind of old theater there. Yeah. So it's like a 300 seat. So, you, so you were in a theater environment, just uh, yeah, not, but, not mean, on the stage. Yes. yes. <laughs> and and literally like. <laughs> <laughs> just to tell you like how bad things got like I, I was the worst janitor of all time like literally 
I would show up and my bosses would be like, Tony, dude, like one of the bathrooms wasn't even cleaned. Like, we don't want to fire you because we're afraid you'd like kill yourself if you got fired from being a janitor. Yeah, yeah. Like you have a college education, I, but we know you don't want to be doing this. We and I might was like, find you hanging in the broom closet. Exactly. It's like, you know. Yeah. And, and the funny thing is, um, I'm sure they prefer a custodial technician, but, but, yeah, exactly. no, but, but like, it's terrible to say it, but, but when you say janitor, it, it sounds like, okay, that's like the spot where you're like okay you don't want to end up being a janitor or yeah. you don't want to flip burgers at burger king or whatever and yeah. and no offense to people to do it's you know earn a living but just to hear that you're the worst at the at spot it. that's like the lowest <laughs> the lowest were you still partying oh yeah hard? Okay. that was oh, the that thing explains i mean yeah, that's yeah. that's that's what was going on i mean it was great because they were flexible and i you know i made a good wage there and they were always really nice, but like I didn't want to do it, and I was also like, you know, partying through all hours of the night. So, you yeah. know, I my old trick would be I would fall asleep behind a door if I had to take a nap while I was supposed to be cleaning. I'd sleep behind a door. So if like my bosses caught me backstage, the door would open on my head, and I'd like turn over real quick and be like, oh, I lost my contact. Where's my contact? <laughs> you know. Oh my and meanwhile, god, that's I'm just awesome. Like, Man. Yeah, that ought to cover it. I'm yeah, sure right? they won't think anything they of have it. No idea. You <laughs> yeah, know, that happens like the contact. third time. They're like, you know, they know I don't wear contacts. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. That's hilarious. You know, and you know, I, I did that for a few years, and then um, finally got sober, and and kind of. I mean, everything slowly evolved from there for me. Yeah. You know, like we were talking before, like for me, it was like definite, like sober and not sober there was like a nice clear line for me between my life not sober and my life sober yeah, you yeah, know yeah, yeah. uh yeah. which is so great because a lot of times people are either enabled or highly functional alcoholics yeah. and obviously i'm almost getting fired as a janitor multiple times <laughs> yeah functioning on a very low, <laughs> a low level function yeah, yeah, yeah. can't even put the fucking uh, <laughs> yeah, toilet very low in functioning correctly alcohol. you know <laughs> um but yeah then i i mean you know, Groundlings kind of became my life. Like, um, we also live directly across the street from a fire station, guys. Um, we yeah. hope everyone's doing. You want to jump on the well. uh, truck and go help them out? <laughs> we are of service always. Yes, yeah, we are just great people. <laughs> uh, but the Groundlings was great, man. That's kind of how I got my start with everything. I met my wife there in the junior company. I got a chance to audition for Saturday Night Live through there. Oh, and, hell yeah. And, uh, and I've been in the main company there now and still am still doing shows and and uh that's awesome so yeah. how does it work because i was always curious about yeah. like groundlings um like do you go in and they and you learn like like do you have to audition to get into it yeah and then so you you do like a basically a mini class which is your audition and then you either get placed in like um you either get placed in basic improv right away or you take like pre-improv kind of just built more building you either blocks. suck or you don't <laughs> it's like, yeah. you said that but <laughs> i will also say that <laughs> yeah. No, no. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so basically the first two levels are basic improv and then you have intermediate improv mm -hmm. and those are all improv based classes the second level you start to kind of create characters um and then if you get past that second level then you go into what's called writer's lab and then you start writing for yourself and creating your own characters okay. So much like, you know, Pee Wee Herman was created there. Yeah, yeah. Elvira was created there. Wait, Phil Hartman is the one that Phil created Phil Hartman, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. yep. Phil Hartman studied there. Like I said, Will Ferrell, the cheerleaders from SNL was yeah. created there. So it's all about creating characters. People always ask me, you know, what's the difference between UCB and Groundlings, you know, Upright Citizens Brigade? Yeah. And I'm like, well, Groundlings is crazy characters in normal situations, and UCB is... Uh, normal people in crazy situations oh, to kind of okay. break it down kind of yeah. easily. So um, after that writer's lab, I'd say there's about a 40% pass rate from there. And then you get into advanced writer's lab where you do two shows on the main stage where the main company comes and watches you. Now the main company is 30 people at a time. It can only be a max of 30 people uh, that have been chosen. It's about 1% of people that start, kind of less than 1% of people that start the program at the Groundlings make it into the main company. Oh yeah. Um, but then they come and they and they basically vote on you after that second writer's level, and then you get chosen to be in the junior company. And that junior company is called Sunday Company. And you, 
write all new material. It's very much like Saturday Night Live. You write all new material, and then you perform every Sunday night a new show. Oh, wow. Well, and, yeah. uh, and then you go six months, and they vote on you. And then you go another six months, and they vote on you. And if you make it through three six-month periods, then you're uh, up for the main company, basically. Oh, wow. Yeah. And So uh, the, all that time you're creating all this new content yeah, for bro. every week? Holy shit. That's the thing. I mean, I would write six to eight scripts a week, sketch scripts. <laughs> I mean, four to five pages, six yeah. to eight of those a week. Fuck, you know. But for great. me, I was just like, great. Yeah, Any yeah. kind of creative outlet. And that's I feel like I thrived the most in that yeah. world where and there's like, like that structure you're talking about exactly you know it's, it's just like i'm disciplined enough i know i can sit down write and create um you know and i just had a couple years of sobriety under my belt too so it was like that pink cloud at the same time yeah, as yeah, i'm yeah. creating and and then i was lucky enough to get picked to go into the main company and uh yeah and like i said that was kind of a fast track through the school and it took me like five years to get all the way through there so I always say it's kind of like a master's degree in comedy yeah you know to get yeah, through yeah. there yeah. It's, yeah it takes that same amount yeah. of time to do it and so alright so then when you're in the main company is is it just is it like every Sunday like that is it is it the main company you have to do one show a year Okay. Uh, which is a three-month commitment. Every Friday and Saturday night, you do sketch shows. Okay. But it's different in that it's not a new show every weekend. Right. You write and create for five weeks, and then the show gets set, and you do that same show for the three-month period. Oh, cool. Yeah. I mean, that every week thing sounds perfect, though, like how it's in the junior company, because it is like really just helping you. Exactly. Like, get, Find get your, your voice. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's that's cool, man. I, I oh, there was always a little bit of me that was like interested in doing that. I just never did it. But you should just go audition uh, for fun dude yeah yeah <laughs> and see if you enjoy it i mean it's yeah. free and you get to kind of see what the experience is and, yeah yeah i think anybody i mean i've taken classes with lawyers doctors yeah just... my dad took classes there oh really uh, yeah dude. yeah i mean like it's a boy oh, you, you said your dad was super funny too yeah right? yeah, yeah he's yeah, great yeah. yeah that's awesome literally i was uh one of the main company members with me as a teacher there and taught him and was like how's your dad doing <laughs> that's i love cool. having him in class yeah <laughs> yeah like, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get some of those dad jokes out yeah, so I don't yeah, have to endure yeah. them. You don't have to hear them over and over oh, God. again. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So so then from there, like what what kind of got you your first like, you know, part or whatever? Like yes. is, is that where you like people saw you? Yeah, yeah. It was kind of that whole SNL thing. So I tested for SNL in two thousand eleven. Okay. And when I did that, kinda like you need an agent and a manager for that. So okay. I ended up getting hooked up with my agent and my manager around the same time and then after SNL after SNL everybody's always like you know they get really excited even if you don't get the show when you come back it's always a crazy pilot season so I auditioned for like 21 pilots whoa Um, also great band (laughs) <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Isn't that a band? Yeah, 21, 21 Pilots is a band. Isn't that a band? Isn't that a band? It sounds like a band. I if think not, it, it should band. be. <laughs> Let's start I a, think band. It's a band. Yeah. I was so on board with that. You were like, I don't know that band. Dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure, it's dude. so obvious that I am. Never mind, man. I don't know him either. It's not cool to know 21 yeah. Pilots is. Anyways, so I came back and. SNL had literally been like my first real audition. So I didn't even know how to audition. Yeah. And I mean, I bombed every single one of those pilot auditions. Oh, every single yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Toast. Terrible. And then I think I got my first little break. I did like a bit on a Disney show. And then another pilot season. Again, like 22 pilots. Nothing, dude. Nothing. Damn. And I couldn't figure Wait, it out. Wait, you said you did a bit on a Disney show? Yeah, I had like a one, like a one-off. How, how did you get that? You just you booked it? In the, uh, just in booked the... it through an audition. Oh, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, I was auditioning for things. But still, I didn't really know enough about auditioning like it's dude, a whole other I, skill set I did dude. three auditions after like jackass people to bam stuff and they were fucking awful and I always wondered like man I, I wish they had the VHS tape of like what to that was so I could just see was. how bad it is because it would be hilarious how bad it is I, same but I always like when I did that just those few times I was like I'm never fucking going to get a part from doing this. I'm, like, terrible at this. It's but I could awful. probably do, like, all right if I was in front of the camera with the director or whatever. But the audition seems like a totally different thing than... It is, dude. It's yeah. a skill set. Yeah. And, I mean, so I went through three pilot seasons like that. Luckily, I got a little recurring role on a CW show called Heart of Dixie that kind of, like, built up oh, my yeah, chops. Yeah, yeah. And I started growing my hair out. I had short hair. Yeah. Kind of like Rick's Rick's length. Yeah. And and then I was like, I'm going to grow my hair out and see what happens. 
and I know this is so stupid, but it was like as soon as I grew my hair out, people were like, oh, okay, you're that guy now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I like tested for three pilots, and then the next thing you know, School of Rock came along. Oh, and it was shit. like Hell synchronicity. Yeah. That was, yeah. And the, oh my God, the, the ladies, because while I was working on Heart of Dixie, I was supposed to look like a Ken doll, so I was supposed to have short hair. So by the end, they were like cornrowing my hair and tucking it underneath. And they were like, <laughs> your hair looks stupid. Cut it. Like, yeah, yeah, why yeah. is it long? And yeah, I'm like, yeah. I just think, you know, this is the thing. This and is working out. This for is me. working. And yeah. then School of Rock came along, and it was like, I've always been a fan of J Jack Black, and yeah. Nickelodeon has a really close relationship with the Groundlings. They do a youth workshop, a teen workshop all oh, summer. Okay. And so they're constantly, their executives are constantly going to see shows there. And uh, I mean, that was one where I was like, this feels too right. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this feels too good. I was kind of prepped already. I'd already been prepped for the letdown. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it worked out, dude. And we got to do three awesome seasons of that. And yeah, hell the yeah. The kids were great. Damn. So really is experience. Jack Black like an executive producer of that? Or No, unfortunately okay. not, dude. Okay. Which kind of, I think, really hurt the sh Not hurt the show. The show was great. But, I mean, he was such a, you know. Yeah critical part to that entire thing yeah, yeah. and I actually I know they had tried to get him to do a guest spot and I'm sure I remember reading an interview somewhere he wasn't involved at all with the Broadway show or with the TV show yeah. and I'm like guys bring him in as a producer like yeah, yeah, yeah. he kept saying that he was going to do you know a guest spot on the show but I'm sure he was like I have no reason to you know yeah. he was such an idol of me uh, uh, idol of mine and I actually got to meet him at a sushi restaurant nice. and uh, and he was so complimentary and kind and sweet. And yeah. He did great on the show. My kids and I have watched the show and and dude, uh, cool. it was, yeah, it was that's, really awesome. That's got to be an awesome moment. Yeah, yeah, it really was, dude. It was super special and uh, I've always been like, I mean, such a huge fan of that guy. Yeah. You know. And, so, uh, so when, after getting on School of Rock, did did that start to really open doors for other parts or or were you sort of like in that role and then you kind of had to wait to you know sometimes they'll they'll be like an exclusive yeah it's thing. interesting because originally and i haven't really talked about this very much but originally like school of rock was sold like it's a continuation of the movie it's going to be yeah, nick yeah. at night it's going to be for adults and kids and I booked the part and we didn't even start casting for kids until like six months later. And I was like, what happened? Well, they had cast me and they got rid of Nick at night completely. So then oh, it turned yeah, into yeah. a strictly Nickelodeon show. So all of a sudden it went from one kind of a show to a totally different kind of show. Yeah. Kind of while I had been cast and there was no like available executives in the Nickelodeon like branch yeah. that like had their hands free to take on this huge new property. And not only that, but they were all like, okay, great. I have six other shows I'm dealing with right now. Yeah. So, you know, between the time I got cast and this show actually came out, it was like a year. Damn. Yeah. So were you just like freaking out? Waiting like, in limbo. Kind of gonna... like, is this going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. You know, meanwhile, I'm like, this is such a huge movie. Like, of course this would make a great TV show. Like, and so it, it became less about Dewey and more about the kids yeah. over that period of time. You know, and I had kind of been sold on the fact that it was going to be a continuation of the movie. And right. it was all these big releases. You know, they found the new Jack Black for the show. And then it kind of became yeah. a kid's show. You yeah. know, and I remember having a discussion. There is no shame in doing a kid's show. It just comes with the territory that it. You know, you might get kind of stuck in a kid's show bubble. Yeah, right. You know, right, when right. you go and do that. Yeah, yeah. For so sure. for me, I was lucky enough to get a, you know, the Groundlings, is, I get to constantly perform and create. And new people get to see me that I was able to do little parts and regular sitcoms, you know, a little thing in yeah. Modern Family, a little thing on New Girl. Awesome. Uh, you know, I got to do um, When We First Met on Netflix, you know, little things here and there that kind of kept me relevant outside of the kids' world. Um, uh, so, so you're staying busy while you're staying kinda, busy, while that was staying busy. Yeah. Um, that's good. Cause I feel like if you weren't, you'd be like, <laughs> it would drive you nuts. Yeah. It drives you, know? you a little yeah. crazy, yeah. but I mean, school of rock was so fun. And I, you know, I took full advantage of that, you know, that I really wanted to direct. So I kind of, 
you know, was talking to the producers always, shadowing always, and I got to direct in the final season, which was great. Hell yeah. And the show got nominated for two Emmys, which was really cool. Yeah, and that's rad. Even though we were kind of ended up being like the little engine that could, I mean, first season ended, we thought we were going to get canceled. Second season ended, thought we were going to get canceled. Third season, thought we were going to blow up finally, and then they canceled us. <laughs> oh, shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. one of those things <laughs> where we were like, I don't know what this the signals feel. everywhere, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the other thing that kind of like throughout that and. I know we learned through sobriety is just kind of keeping our side of the street clean, yeah. showing up, doing great work, being someone fun that, to be around, yeah. and then going home, yeah, and leaving the rest behind, yeah, and like know? stay out of the results sort of exactly, deal. Yeah. Dude. which is tough to do sometimes. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. So I was just thinking about like when you're an actor, you yeah, you know, you really have to try to stay in shape. Yeah, and- depending upon. The role Who, what type of actor? I know yeah. I know my one buddy, he was saying he's been doing this for a long time. He's on Buffy the Vampire Slayer and all oh, these yeah, other movies yeah. and, and he's in like some of the Marvel stuff. And his uh, agent was like, Yeah, you know, it's great, like all the stage acting experience, all the experience you have, the roles and this yeah. is like it's great, but you need to stay thin or who cares? You won't work. You know, and it was like, Oh man. You know, it's so he so was fucked. talking about that and yeah. so his and I watched because his his regiment, like he's super strict about his diet then he works yeah. out all the time and does this yeah. and i'm like that's got to be pretty hard like yeah and uh and you're uh you're, you're close to naked there in this new uh gemstones episode let's just say <laughs> throughout the season it might get even further than close oh, to naked wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Yeah, you had no shirt on. You're like a devil. Yeah, a devil with the six 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 tattoo. Uh-huh. Um, so what yeah. do you do? Like you have to well, work out. And- I mean, it's always kind of been my nature. You know, going to military school, playing lacrosse, and all the high school sports. Yeah. You know, and being a fat kid. And, uh, you know, it, you know, I kind of traded one addiction for another. When I stopped drinking, I got really into running marathons. And then I've always been a workout guy. Oh, so yeah. for me, you know, lately what I found that works the best for me is I do like circuit training. And Adam and I, the whole time we were shooting, dude, we were just like always like, what circuit are you going to do today? Dude? And, like like <laughs> do we go nip, over. Bro? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we go over and they even give us a nod in this next episode. You'll see. Yeah. They wrote a little thing and for Keith and Kelvin, you know, that maybe they work out. You'll have to watch and see. Um, But we'd always work out, you know, we'd do these short circuits and then, um, and then we'd go right into this cold plunge. They had a a pool basically and we'd put like a hundred pounds of ice in there and then we'd all get in and try and stay in for three minutes. So I got totally addicted to it. (laughs) Is it good? It's good for you though? Well, you know, there's this guy Wim Hof. If you listen to any podcast, he's done literally every podcast, but they call him the ice man and it's supposed to be great for your, you know, uh, lymphatic system. You know, the idea behind it is that it tricks your body into thinking that it's freezing. So you burn like 300% more calories. And then it's also supposed supposed to be great for your muscles and your skin and everything else. You know, it's just like you would ice your knee if you sprained it or whatever. So it's supposed to be great for that stuff. Okay. You know, afterwards, tendons and stuff. I I don't really, you know, both my meniscus are torn in both knees. So for me, it's also like a big part of, you know, recovering after a workout. Yeah. Um, But selfishly, and I think you'll see because I think you should hop into the ice bath. I'll see. (laughs) But you'll feel high. You'll literally, there's a high that comes with it. Oh, for real? For sure. So like you're exhausted (laughs) after a workout and you go in and like the invigoration, it's like having three shots of espresso. So you have the ice bath here, you do the workouts and then you jump into the ice bath. Yeah, so I I Googled it when I got home. How could I do a ice bath at home and so i bought a chest freezer from best buy sealed it up with silicone and then i oh fill it up God. with water and i have it set on a timer so it turns on for like three hours a day and it keeps it between like 35 and 50 degrees and then try and get in there for like three minutes a day so you purposely torture yourself yes with an ice exactly bath. oh my god and you said i'll see so i'm i'm being roped at yes this dude, i think you should god damn I, well as you'll see i'm not really a guy that works out a lot so <laughs> so this ought to just clear it all up yes. hopefully Hopefully 300% of the uh, burned calories will really, really help out. You're going to love it, dude. I think you're really going to dig it. Uh, I don't think I'm going to love it, but I think Rick's going to love seeing me get in there. I think so, too. I'll enjoy it as well. (laughs) 
I think you'll probably see well, it on if, my Instagram. Hey, if I can help both of you enjoy it, then <laughs> then, I'll, then I'll torture myself. For yes. The so how long do you have to stay in? I try and do, like, supposedly, like, three minutes is the optimal. Three minutes? Yeah, but I, I'll give you 30 seconds. Okay. Because it takes getting used to. I mean, it's all about breath. and. Wait, you get used to it? Yeah. Oh. For sure. Okay, so give me some t- tips as far as... So the idea is that you... You get in, you always want to get your head under. Um, but, I think my heart's already like, yeah. like You get in, you get your head <laughs> under, and then you want to find your breath so in, in through the nose, out through the mouth. I have, uh, I have terrible blood circulation, so I always keep my fingertips and my toes out of the water. And you want to just get that breath controlled. And then once you get there, you can fi- kind of find the rhythm. And I know this is probably st- stupid, sober stuff, but I'll do like my affirmations while I'm in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that usually is about the three minutes, and then I'm in okay. and out. Wait, so you said in through the nose, out through the mouth, with your head under. So do you have no, a- no. So you d- dip oh. your head under. If you can do ten seconds with your head under, that's great. If not, just dip your head under, and then oh you're basically God. from neck in. And like I said, I keep my fingers out, my toes out, and you just try and stay in there, get that breath under control, because your immediate reaction is jump out get out yeah i know i don't think i'm gonna make 30 seconds but we'll, we'll give it a shot <laughs> yeah. that i think the ice bath has been amazing and then i do intermittent fasting okay yeah yeah you know, cool you eat in an eight hour window well and then a gallon of water a day yeah okay that's good i'll have to get on the tony cavallero yeah, regimen dude. here and then uh, <laughs> those are the quick tips man i mean yeah. if you can wait until like 1 p.m or 2 p.m to eat then you've got an eight-hour window to eat basically kind of whatever you want. So you're yeah. skipping a meal, but that's giving your body that much time in between that eight-hour period to burn the calories. Okay. Um, but everyone's kind of on this intermittent fasting thing right now. And for me, I think that's that's where I maintain the best. And okay. if I have to lose a little bit, I'll take that eight-hour window and I'll shrink it down to six hours and I'll cut out some of the carbs. Yeah. And uh, that gallon of water a day, I'm telling you, is the game changer okay i bought a big glass gallon jug and uh wake up in the morning two full 12 ounce glasses before any food or anything else and then just the rest of the day chugging that water till the gallon's gone damn yeah dude yeah i'll have to get on that all right ready for this cold plunge (laughs) Uh, i'm not ready but i'm gonna do it let's do it (laughs) all right we're gonna test out the temperature first in this cold plunge right now we're at 37.75 37.75 It's dropping for you, dude. Oh, good, good. I'm glad it's getting lower. Oh my god, Rick, what have you gotten me into? Yeah, I, got the, I got the towel for you. Okay, and then you slowly lay what? back. Slow? I kind of want to quickly. So, oh my god. All right. Sit what? Down. Fuck. This is terrible. This is so cold, dude. Oh, my okay. God. <laughs> Put your legs up. All right. And then dip your head in. Take a little, yeah. Go for it, dude. I don't know. You got it. I can't get down. You got it. Go for it. Okay, and then keep your shoulders under. Put your toes out. Oh, dude, I want to be done with it. Start timing them. Okay. No, I'll I'm done you, with it, Rick. I'll give you. Put your, Put your hands out. Put your hands out. Yeah, Put your hands out of the water. Put your hands oh. out of the water. Oh. Yeah, there you Start go. Start breathing oh. correctly. Deep breaths. All right, let's see if we can get a minute. No way, dude. You got it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Find the breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. Oh, yes, dude. You've only got 45 seconds left, bro. 45? <laughs> I can only do 30, for Four, real. Four, <laughs> I'm frozen. <laughs> 35 oh. left, dude. <laughs> oh. Oh. You got it. Dude, you only got 25 seconds left, bro. Dude, I think my body just stopped. <laughs> <sighs> What's your favorite part about this experience right now? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I, my, like, everything is, like, tingling. Right? Holy fucking hell. Yeah, it's great, right? No. You're crushing it, dude. You found that breath. <laughs> oh. oh. Is that it? That's it. How well, do I get up? I don't know if my body works enough so. to get up. Oh my god. Oh. Oh, Rick. Fuck, it hurts. Fuck. It hurts. It hurts. 
I think my feet are gonna break when I get out. Maybe help assist him out so he doesn't. Oh, hold on, can I? Oh, oh my. <laughs> Yo, it just feels like a goddamn ice cube. Oh. Shake, shake your body. Yeah, you have to do that. Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh my God. Start breathing, like, take deep breaths in. There you go. Out into the nose. Out Rick, have you done this before? No, but I've watched 10 million videos. Oh. Love it, right? Oh Rick? my God. All right, I got to get in there, too. Oh. <laughs> my fucking chubby little body. Oh, Rick. You just burned 300 calories. It feels like, I feel like I just turned into, like, it just went solid. It's like my water. <laughs> oh. oh my god, look at this pro. Oh my god. I don't even know how he got his head down, dude. Look how deep he is. Look how long he's been in there. Wow. It's so good for your hair. Oh my god. Yeah, dude. Wow, you're you're just obviously a professional. That was like so pro. How I couldn't even get my head like under it, like I you barely gotta, cheated. Yeah, you got to put your feet up a little oh, bit. Oh, feet but, up and then butt. Down. Yeah. Okay. But how great do you feel now? I, mean, I though, do right? feel good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I told you, right? <laughs> but it's crazy. My body feels like an ice block. Right. And then it's like thawing out, and like the thaw out is like, whoa. it is euphoric. Euphoric, in this. right? Yeah. I know. Wow. Uh, I do something new every day, dude. I never thought I would do this. Well, thanks, Tony, for fucking. Well, look at that smile, yeah, dude. That's yeah, what I yeah, said. Yeah. Anytime anyone ever does it, they're yeah. miserable while they're in here. But yeah, then afterwards, yeah. it's great. Now, I noticed that. Um, so you did some little parts. Did you do some parts on uh, Life in Pieces? And, yep, Life in and, Pieces. And then, that was uh, great. Angie Tribeca. Oh yeah, dude. Because uh, I'm friends with a bunch of the camera guys on both and, of and those? girls on those sh oh, on those shows. Great, so dude. yeah. So you know ba Dan back at all. Uh, I, I, Mike Pepin was yeah, uh, yeah, for Life, yeah. Life and Pieces, uh, and uh, Jacob Pinger. And, okay, I'm sure I and Joel Talbot and like all these. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jeremiah, uh, I forget his last name, but yeah, he was. Uh, they were all on Life and Pieces for a bunch, and then uh, Rob Gilpin was another guy that was on uh, Angie. That's Trebecca. so cool, man. And, yeah. So yeah, Angie Trebecca was really neat because we shot that up in uh, Oregon. Yeah. Because it was a Fargo episode. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and that yeah, one yeah. was crazy because. I got the audition, it was for a Fargo cop, and I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna get cast as a Fargo cop. So like, I put my hair in a ponytail and put it in a snow cap, yeah. and auditioned to <laughs> yeah, get yeah. my Fargo accent. Yeah. And sure enough, they were like, you got it. And I had them in a big hat with my long hair underneath it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this yeah. big winter cap, so it hid the hair. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, Life in Pieces was really fun. I got to play like a, a dirtbag bike thief. Okay. And uh, my buddy Dan works on that show, and you know, popping in and getting to do those one-offs are so much fun and yeah yeah Hell both yeah. of those shows were fantastic yeah. too so so you have interest in like directing it are you do are you directing any projects right now or yeah my wife and i are actually we uh she wrote a podcast that's going to be a simultaneous like just like you guys are recording now it's going to be semi-scripted yeah uh improv style podcast oh and nice so nice i directed like six webisodes for that cool that Hell should yeah. be coming out soon nice. and then, like i said i did the can the, you say uh, what it's called or not yet not yet okay cool but it should be coming out in the next few weeks but uh anybody that wants to watch it just look at my instagram i'm sure yeah Post Hell yeah. the crap out of it, but um, dude, you know, that's I'm, rad. I always love those podcasts that are like that. Like they're like kind of set, and there's a whole style. Yeah, to it. yeah. yeah. This, this one a very stylized. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Yeah, it was funny because when I started doing this one, people would go, "Oh, what's the theme?" I'm like, oh, "I'm just sitting down and talking to yeah. people that are interesting." And then, then because I didn't know enough about podcasts when I yeah. started doing it, and then as I did, then I started to learn. Like, damn, there's so much you can do with a podcast, and so many different cool styles. I know, dude. Like you think you can basically make like a, like a you know audio movie yeah on on a podcast do you have any that you listen to that you love like that that are like scripted um did you do homecoming no i well i did what was the uh i mean just the one that was i don't say it was scripted the uh what was it shit town was the one s town dude. yeah s town that or whatever yeah great. that one i got that could have been scripted man the yeah. character in there was so great yeah. so three-dimensional <laughs> yeah I mean, the fact that they didn't even go in there to interview this guy. They went in there to 
to research this murder. Yeah. And, and then, then the next thing you know, it became this character study that. of that guy. Yeah. There's now, one that I really like. I don't know if you like horror stuff, but there's one called The Black Tapes. Oh, that's shit. That's all scripted. Dude, yeah, I'd like to yeah? check that out. Oh, dude, I, never, you'll yeah. dig this one. It's, yeah. it's like a, it's, um, it's about this doctor, and uh, I guess he's like a... a he investigates paranormal activity to um, to de- debunk it. Okay. And so the podcast host is going to interview him. She goes to his office, and he's got this line of VHS tapes. And at the very bottom, there's like six black tapes. And she's like, "What are the what are the difference what is in the tapes?" Yeah, shit. Over and there. she and yeah. he goes, "Well, those are the six that I haven't been able to debunk yet." Okay. And so yeah. it kind of goes into each of those six tapes, yeah. and they're all kind of interwoven in this crazy thing. Yeah. And then you find out that his dad was in fact opposite of what he was. His okay. dad went out to prove all of these ghost shit. stories. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. sounds cool. Yeah. Yeah. That <laughs> we'll have to dive one. into the world of podcasts. Yeah, right. More. I know. Yeah. I know. That's uh. That's that's rad. So, also, other than the directing stuff, you have a uh, brand new show out that yeah, started dude. last night that was yeah. fucking awesome. Hilarious, freaky, like everything in one. Isn't it a genre bender, dude? Dude, it's nuts. Right? But um, it's the uh, the Righteous Gemstones yeah, on, on HBO. HBO. man. And I, uh, I, Danny McBride. Yeah. From the mind of Danny McBride. I know, dude. That dude's incredible. Incredible. Yeah. And just the sweetest, family-oriented kind Hell yeah that's good i mean to know. yeah that's the thing like you see his characters and i <laughs> i listened yeah. to dax dax <laughs> shepherd's podcast this morning yeah. and it's like is it ever weird when people come up to you and think that like you're kenny powers and he's like i guess it's pretty flattering to think that that character's so well fleshed out that people think that i'm really him yeah because then when you meet the guy and he's just like a normal <laughs> sweet i know but you, you know, think of him guy as i know that. like yeah, yeah. But and uh, that's so good to know that he's because I would imagine I never met him. I imagine that he's just some regular, oh like normal guy. And then yeah. you see the characters that he plays and it's like intimidating. You he's got to be that misogynist, you know, <laughs> yeah. egocentric yeah, asshole. Yeah. And he's just not, dude. Selfless, caring, person. like, you know, that whole group. I mean, talk about a dream come true. You know, School of Rock ends. And I'm kind of like, well, I'll just go back into pilot season. I haven't done one in a while, but now I'm loose. I've done this show. And then last pilot season, nothing, dude. The only work I did last year in the first half of the year was on the dirt. Okay. The one day on the yeah. dirt. That was the only well, income you did I had. One day? One day on the dirt, dude. Oh, shit. That was my income. That for role the was entire... fucking amazing. Thank you, dude. So, anybody that's listening that doesn't know that, that Tony played Ozzy Osbourne in The Dirt, yeah. Jeff Tremaine directed that uh, the Motley Crue yeah, movie, and, uh, and you fucking killed it, dude. Thank that you, was dude. That was amazing. Like, because I, you know, that, that's a legendary story that, that you've heard over oh time. My God. That was the first book I read in LA. Yeah. I mean, and, and it's in the book, but it's even like folklore, that, that scene. Yeah, for sure. And you fucking nailed it and Thanks, and dude. and made made me feel like i was right there in the mix of that oh, actually dude. happening thanks man that, that <laughs> means so much yeah. I, <laughs> it was rad i mean and honestly it's it's just so funny how things happen like i'd never done an ozzy osbourne impression ever and i remember yeah. getting the audition and my <laughs> wife being like okay we got to do your makeup we got to put you in a dress yeah. let's do this and i'm like i don't even <laughs> This is going to be stupid. Like, okay, great. You know, and the next thing you know, it's like the director wants to have you come in for a director's session. And I was like, I'm actually, I can't. I'm going to be in New York. And then a day later, they want to Skype with you from New York. So, like, I brought the dress and the makeup with me to New York. And I'm <laughs> Skyping. Yeah. With the eye under eye makeup. And I'm Skyping with the producers and Jeff in the room next to my in-laws with my ass hanging out, faking, <laughs> sniffing ants. And I'm just yes. like, I mean, this is fun, dude. This is crazy. And then when I actually got the part, I was like, yes, this is what's going to break me free from kids TV. Like, this is yeah. going to be the next big thing. <laughs> Hell yeah. And then it was like, the pilot season was nothing again. Like, I was oh, like, oh, yeah. God, what's going to happen? You know? It's such a crazy ride being an actor. Like, uh, I would imagine, you know, um, I, I just some of the stuff that I did in front of the camera afterwards, it was like, yeah. all right, I got to go get a job as a camera guy because I don't know what the fuck I'm going to, how I'm going to eat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so, but 
you know, it's the, kind of the feast or famine exactly sort of you know thing. You got to be smart, smart with investment and saving, yeah. and yeah, and then you know, everybody's got to be multifaceted these days, dude. Yeah, yeah, for you know, sure. Not everyone's going to be Tom Cruise, and not everyone's going to work consistently. Yeah, you know, so starting a podcast, you know, directing stuff writing stuff doing shows at the groundlings like for me yeah. i've always had to stay real busy yeah you know that's right so so when you did the dirt then then it was it was kind of dry for a little while yeah and then it, how, it, how did the <laughs> so my wife was writing with her friend laura bell bundy and um laura bell showed up in a church dress to come to a writing meeting and uh <laughs> and uh, my wife was like, you look so nice. What are you doing? She's like, I just came from this audition for the new Danny McBride show. And uh, <laughs> like, what? she's like, can I read the script? And Laura Bell sent the script to Annie and Annie read it. And she was like, you have to audition for this show. And so I asked my manager and my agent and, and they worked on it, worked on it, worked on it. And then finally I got an audition for this crazy part. And wife and I worked shop kind of a character we were driving back from Tahoe working on the lines and oh, figuring out yeah. this character and I was like I'm gonna make a big choice kind of like what I did with Ozzy and I had never played kind of a low energy character like this on TV ever before and yeah so I I made this big choice and for whatever reason those guys really dug it and I mean I just couldn't believe it dude the whole thing was so surreal yeah I was like if there could be a dream a dream next project this would be Hell what yeah. it would be i mean it's fucking amazing and i was telling you before we started that i had never met you so i was i saw that and i was like wait <laughs> is, is, this is this gonna be able to gonna be able to talk like because <laughs> you were so mellow in that thing i was like oh no i i, I hopefully i'm not like pulling words out of his <laughs> mouth the whole all, time dude. and then it's like yeah and it's 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 nice to know that you're like, well you play a character very well <laughs> and, yeah uh, yeah I, mean. I wondered uh actually i wondered when when you mentioned that you had done uh part on modern family yeah. did you know adam divine from that had you already known him before so adam and i knew each other he had taken classes at the groundlings with my good buddy jillian bell who was on workaholics with him yeah but the first time i met adam um, I had an improv comedy group called Robert Downey Jr. Jr. before um, <laughs> before I even got into Groundlings. I was in between classes because there's these long waiting periods in between next the next class. Yeah. Um, there's these long wait lists. And I want to say it was 2011. My buddy Josh McDermott, who's on The Walking Dead, was like best buds with Adam. And we would have a stand-up comic come and do a set before we did our improv set. And Adam was one of our first stand-up comics to come and do a set. Oh, shit, yeah. And I was like, who is that guy? And my buddy Josh was like, oh, it was Adam. He's a good buddy of mine. We met. Hey, how are you? you're so funny. And Josh was like, yeah, he just sold a show to Comedy Central, this web series he's been doing, oh, Workaholics. Yeah. So it was right before Workaholics wow. came to happen. Yeah. And then I worked on his show, Adam Devine's House Party. I did a little tiny part yeah. on it. And then uh, I worked on a movie when we first met with him. And so we'd always kind of run through similar circles, but nice. then we became real buds. Yeah. Yeah. Good friends working good, on the show. I, I never met Adam, but I know Kyle Nuichek yeah, dude. pretty well. He was he's on awesome. he was on the podcast too. Oh, like he's I did, so I did an great, episode dude. with him too. And oh, uh, I love that. Yeah, guy. I uh, I actually played against him in this ping pong match that we did. Oh, with uh, does Steve-O put that on, or uh, is Steve-O he, just competing? Kyle does. Okay, that's right. That's Kyle right. Does Kyle does over does at Wonk. Yes. And then uh, I played Kyle. Kyle beat me. Then Adam Ray beat. Kyle, Kyle and then Steve O B Adam, Adam Ray. And I'm then, doing Adam's podcast tonight. Oh yeah! Oh nice! Oh yeah. yeah! That that's awesome. <laughs> what a small yes, world! It is a small world. Oh, uh, I yeah, love that's that. nuts. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude. But that, so there wasn't. It wasn't a connection there between Adam that kind of got you in the mix with that. I didn't know anyone, dude. Okay. Yeah. The whole yeah, thing yeah. just came out of this audition. Yeah. That's. Oh, that's. So and then cool. my friend Edie from the Groundlings had worked with Danny on Vice Principals and as a writer and plays Danny's sister on the show. Yeah. She's yeah, the yeah. one that plays the sister. So we'd known each other forever. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I don't think we even talked until after I got the part. Oh yeah. And I mean, it was just yeah, synchronicity, just, like yeah. the whole thing, dude. I, I just couldn't believe it. It's we were sitting right over there. Yeah. I had just tested for the part, yeah. And they called us up and they were like, "You got it. Sweet. You guys shoot in July." Yeah. And I was like, 
This All is right. crazy. I remember being a fucking Wait, janitor. Wait, you shot that just in July now? No, or... we shot the pilot last July. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. we just finished that. The, the okay, eight, I was the like, rest of, damn. Yeah, damn, right? I know. <laughs> I was like, I know. Like, it was like hot off the press right in It the... is pretty hot off the press, <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got home July 1. From yeah, finishing episode nine. Yeah, okay. And we got home, and, and, and a month just, later, and it's rolling. Yeah, yeah, I mean, see, that seems like a crazy turnaround, right? Yeah, I couldn't believe it because usually we finish a project and it's like, okay, we'll see you next year. Yeah, like, exactly. So yeah. it's so cool that it came out on Sunday, and and uh, yeah, dude, that was just such a trip. And then getting to go out there, and everybody was so nice, dude. Yeah, and so excited, and just creative. Yeah. And I mean, I'm getting to work with fucking Danny McBride. That, that was, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, like, <laughs> I mean, I was going to say, dude, when I was working yeah. as a janitor, my dad lives in Pasadena. I still remember, like, I'd get off of work Sunday and I'd go over to my dad's house because I hated my place. I lived in a shithole on yeah, Sunset yeah. In Normandy. And I'd go to my dad's place and my stepmom would make me dinner. I'd stay the night. I'd stay the night on Sunday nights. And I would watch Eastbound. Fuck and it. I'd be like, why isn't anyone talking Kenny about this show? Powers. And I'd be like, this show is incredible. <laughs> yes. There's never been anything like this I before. I mean, it was the most amazing thing. Just, I think, I, I forget if it was, this is how it started, but him sitting in that truck listening to his own self-help self -help tapes. <laughs> you know, you're, like, that is you're the brilliant. fucking best, you yeah. know, like. <laughs> so oh brilliant. God. Oh, man. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, that's got to be a dream come true, because that, that is pretty amazing. And, and super super talented guy yeah. and uh and i just i love what he's doing there and i mean the, the show had that sensibility i i hadn't looked at who wrote and directed it and yeah. all that i just started watching last night yeah. and then it had his whole thing so then at the end when it's like written and directed by by him and then um jody hills involved, i was like oh, all right it's this all makes crew, sense yeah. yeah this is yes this is this and god how excited i am that there's another one because when he and down was done it was like fuck like yeah. what am i gonna do yeah you know <laughs> and then and like then just watch it again but <laughs> but then you're like yeah, something you know, something new and it's just so rad that there is something i new. know man and it, like i said it was just a dream i mean you know and they've got such a cool thing going on out there in charleston like my wife came with me we lived a block from the beach and like every yeah, weekend it'd be like too, yeah. you know it'd be like hey let's uh we're all getting together to watch game of thrones at danny's house Hey, we're all gonna go to the beach together. It's yeah. like adult summer camp for five <laughs> months in Charleston. Yeah. Like, hell yeah, it's amazing, and people are still excited about people shooting TV shows there. It's not like, yeah. hey, what do you do? Uh, you can't help me. Mm, not yeah, interested. Right, right, it was right. Like, Where are you from? Yeah. How do you like it here? What's it was your like favorite that food? Southern hospitality you gotta try, yeah, deal. Man. Yeah. I mean, it was just amazing, and I got, you know, Danny got the bug. Danny, David, um, like the, th that whole crew. They all like moved out there. His production company. He lives there full time. David yeah. Gordon Green lives there full time. Oh, so, oh, nice, yeah, nice. It's amazing. Yeah. I could see why. Like, I went down there. I, I worked a little bit on this uh, Bill Bill Murray documentary. Nice, um, dude. It's like the myth or whatever. It's some yeah. documentary that's on there now. And um, and uh, I was down there for just a weekend, and I was like, oh man, I could see like spending the time here or right? living here you know because it is it is a nice small town yeah, good and feel the food's and, great yeah and like the beach is right there yeah i mean it was just insane man and we brought our three dogs so we'd take the, the, do the dogs to the beach yeah and then we'd show up at work and it would just be a blast you know and yeah just, yeah that's a good yeah. time so so you you mentioned as your wife is she's a writer too yeah, writer actor yep oh and nice yeah, yeah that yeah. yeah that's really cool so you yeah. guys get to kind of bounce stuff off exactly of one she's got a She's got a blog uh, that she pops in every once in a while called Heels in the Hills. Okay. It's all kind of funny yeah. female perspective stuff. Was she ground? She was yeah. ground. That's where you yeah. met. In yeah, the I remember company. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm listening. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and I mean, she was so gorgeous. I, 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 and also like, I just remember she was so pretty and and sweet and soft spoken. And I remember the first sketch I ever saw her do. She played a stripper uh, <laughs> that worked the lunch shift. <laughs> Who was trying to pick up? It's a, a right on type, right? right on type. <laughs> yeah. Who was trying to pick up a beer bottle with her cooter? Whoa. And I was like, I'm in love with this girl. <laughs> How do I get oh, to know the her? The heavens have yeah. opened up. And then, like, I remember, <laughs> I remember, like, it was maybe our fourth writing meeting together, and she was like, we were talking about something, and she was like, yeah, I wrote a script that got optioned at Cannes a, a couple years ago, and I was like. You're like 24. A couple years ago, what are you talking oh. about? Yeah. You know, 
And she like sent me this script, and it was like a full length feature she wrote when she was 19 that she optioned at Cannes. Oh and I was like, God. this girl's a genius. Oh my God, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, she's yeah. way out of my league. What yeah. the fuck is happening? Yeah. I'm in shorts and sandals right now on a lacrosse jersey. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is crazy. And I mean, maybe she's I just, could dupe her into yeah, falling maybe? in love with me. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how this happened. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, we're working on a few things right now. We're working on a horror script, and like I said, the podcast, and we got a couple TV show pitches. So. I don't know. We're you know, hopefully we got something cool with, with Jeff coming down the pipeline. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Really rad. Ooh, yeah. yeah. I know. <laughs> Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so how many episodes of, of the new show? The There's Righteous nine. Gem nine stands. in this in this uh, first season. And okay, cool. Fingers crossed we Get yeah. to go back to Charleston and do it all over yeah, again, man. That would be rad. So yeah. eight more, cause and and uh, if you haven't check it out, it's on HBO. The Righteous Gemstones, yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah, dude. And uh, dude, thanks for coming on the best. Yeah, man. Thanks so much for having me. <laughs> Hell yeah. This was awesome. Good dude. stuff. Yeah. All right. <laughs>